what do you do when you get an invitation to show photos at a photo exhibition in the middle of China? Well, of course you start packing. There's a long journey from the north of Iceland where we live, but this is something not to be missed, even though it means traveling to the other side of the planet. Arriving in San Menchia, Henan, in the, in the middle of China, it was hard to miss the billboards and the arts for the exhibition that could be seen all over the city. This was a huge event by any standard. In China, they really know how to open a photo exhibition with a loud bang. The opening ceremony was outstanding and thousands of people attended the exhibition which lasted a few days. It was a great honor for both me and Gida to be invited. The exhibition is huge, to say the least. This was the 12th Chinese Photography Art Festival held in collaboration with the China Photographers Association. And this was the second year a handful of selected international photographers were invited to participate in the San Menchia White Swan Wildlife International Exhibition. Our exhibition was all about wildlife, not landscape. Studio of Masters are collaborating with the project. When we arrived, it was Jeremy Chan and Johnny Ho that guided us through the exhibition. Studio of Masters is an international photography guild. They are a comprehensive international service platform instilling self-value self for uh, photographers through promoting the development and inheritance of photography and image art culture. The international exhibition was dedicated to wildlife. We sent samples of uh, Icelandic wildlife focused on the Arctic fox, the bird life and the few mammals we have in Iceland. It took a few hours to see the whole exhibition of both the Chinese Photographers Association and the Wildlife International Photography Exhibition. The fact is that it was mind-blowing to meet all the photographers coming from different corners of the world and hear their stories behind their pictures. Then I saw the rotor was dragged down to the bushes and it was gone. Then I walked to the rotor and then the lynx jumps out of the bushes uh, 25 meters and start licking her paw. And I'm there without the camera. <laughs> you know the feeling, it's horrible. First time you see a lynx and then uh, I just talked slowly to her and backed away and the next day I was sitting in a hide for the whole day and she come back for the last awesome. day. Yeah. And she knew uh, she knew I was there, but yeah. She was pregnant. And told her. The invited foreign photographers were not many and it was great to meet those talented photographers and we definitely made new friends. Yeah, and so this is a bottle. The circle oh, here, so yes. that's the mouth of a bottle. Okay. And so the, the, a breeding pair will yeah. live inside a bottle okay. and lay the eggs on the inside. And so I, I assume this guy's the male, and so he's a little bit protective about. Yeah. So I'm sort of probably about this far away from the bottle. Set up my camera, and I have a strobe shooting into the back of the bottle because it's a glass, so the light will go inside, so I can light up. Wow. And then another strobe in just to fill in the place. Awesome. Turn this one up and up and down. Boom. Wow. Most of the photographers we met had already been to Iceland. Since this was a wildlife exhibition, it was nice to see Iceland in a, in a pool with Photographers from Africa, the Philippines, Norway, Hawaii, China, Germany, Finland and the United States to name a few. It was intriguing to see the different subjects of the photographers, big and small creatures on land and in sea, and the Icelandic puffin even.
A comprehensive, almost 500 page long book was uh, published with selected photos from the Wildlife International Photography Exhibition. It was a real testament to the ambition behind the Photography Art Festival. Outside of the exhibition we had a great hotel with swans on it and great time with our new friends. But who goes all the way to China without getting a glimpse of the culture and the food? Our new two friends, Jeremy and Sando, they stopped on nothing to show us the Chinese food culture. And we really loved it. We got on a tour to see the famous historic Hangu Pass scenic area. Of course the Icelanders, well, we tend to get a bit lost and we heard that our uh, guides had been searching for the tall guy and the small women who did wander off from the group in search of landscape motifs. way back to the airport in Changshu, we got to visit the Henan Museum. There we got a chance to see the oldest known musical instrument from China, among other things, dating back to around 6000 BC. In short, China was a pleasant surprise, amazing to be more accurate, and we look forward to going back. I think we all have our ideas and even prejudices about countries and what to expect. The country and the culture was great, but heading back to Iceland, what stands out is all the new friends and the connections we made.